Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoe filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is, of course, the Tom O'Brien Show. Now, we have a great segment coming up for you right now. You've heard me talk about this company quite a bit, mainly through the kind of vehicle of Gush and Drip, but also SPXS, SPXL. I'm, of course, talking about direction. We are joined right now by Elliot Wellenbach. Elliot Wellenbach is a senior VP uh, of Direction and Institutional ETF Strategist. Elliot, how are you doing? I'm doing great today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're getting a little bit of cold front here in Florida, which is pretty nice. Um, you know, first thing I wanted to talk about, Elliot, you know, I brought up Gush and Drip, and I, I think I'd mentioned this to you last time before I even worked for TFNN. This was one of my favorite kind of uh, plays to do, right? Now, we have a lot of really interesting stuff going on in the oil market. Of course, you had a pretty interesting run up around, at least in the crude futures, I think up to a high right now of 78.33, at least in that short term. Uh, of course, you get a lot of upward pressure from tensions in the Middle East, but then you get some of this downward pressure as well from the deflation in China. And then, of course, we were going over uh, yesterday how you had a lot of producers uh, buying futures to lock in a sale at 78, which I think is kind of a maybe a bearish perspective on that. Curious to hear what you have to say on that, what you're thinking and kind of what direction is kind of positioned with on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. A lot of different factors affecting uh, oil right now and also uh, energy and oil related equities. Um, like you mentioned, we have uh, geopolitical uh, Israel and Iran. Uh, we saw yesterday Israel announcing that they might not be targeting in, uh, Iran's oil infrastructure. Right. And on top of that, uh, China, uh, world's largest importer, uh, there was a highly anticipated briefing from the finance ministry, and there were no specifics to incentives to boost consumption. Mm -hmm. So both of those uh, you know, reports sent oil lower, uh, lower. And as you mentioned, we have a few leverage and inverse ETFs that track uh, different oil related equities gush and drip is uh, your oil and gas expiration production index so again all equities two uh, two times leverage daily these are short-term tactical trading products but gush is the bull fund trip is a bear fund and then if you're looking to go a little broader uh, the energy select sector ERX, ERY, uh, both 2X on the energy select sector. And again, these are all equities. So they're not directly uh, investing in oil and trading oil, but they're uh, oil and energy related equities. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and like I said, we, we have spoken on this show plenty of times with Gush and Drip, and they're just, uh, it, it, it's really nice, especially if you're anticipating you know, some broader movements over the long term. Uh, I think some other interesting stuff we got going on today is really, I think at the crux, you know, we have we have Netflix coming out tomorrow, right, with some earnings. And then you have TSMC. We spoke a little bit yesterday about ASML. Of course, they're providing the lithography machines uh, for some of these foundries like TSM. I know some people were getting a little, uh, I think, antsy on the whole sector itself, right? Not kind of thinking, well, ASML is kind of the first spot you go to. And then you have the foundry, you have the demand for those final goods, and things like NVIDIA. But, you know, you have TSMC, they're expanding um, uh, production, I guess, in Europe. They're expected to report a revenue of 23.3 billion in the third quarter, a guidance of 22.4 to 23.2, 9.3 billion in revenue. That company seems like it's gonna do pretty well. And you actually do have some leveraged ETFs for this as well. You have the TSMX, which is a two times bull, and the TSMZ, which is a one times bear. Not, I wanna talk a little bit about TSMC before we move on, but I was also taking a look too, just with the you know, we have the thing going on with the AI potentially capping, uh, excuse me, the US capping AI chip sales. That was blown away really by how many different options you have with that from NVIDIA to the AI bulls to UBOT. But I wanna talk a little bit about TSMC, kind of what you guys are thinking, just like general macroeconomic kind of factors that are playing into the semiconductors right now. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we have a handful of uh, single stock leverage and inverse ETFs, leverage uh, to the bull side, 2X, and then single inverse on the bear side. And actually, uh, TSM, uh, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Netflix are uh, both uh, newer additions to yeah. our overall suite of ETFs. And, you know, as you mentioned, uh, ASML uh, really yesterday kind of sent the chips uh, and the semiconductor space lower after, uh, you know, they had a slowing demand and also their uh, projected revenue forecast moving forward. Yeah. That kind of sent a shockwave and some ripples throughout the broader semi space. And, you know, exactly as you mentioned, uh, 
TSM uh, C uh, plans to uh, you know uh, uh, have more uh, plants in Europe, and we've actually seen significant trading volume uh, increase today in both our bull and bear products. So. TSMX is the 2X uh, bull, and then TSMZ is our bear. And across both those products, we've seen a pretty high um, uptick in uh, trading uh, for both those because, uh, again, Taiwan Semi uh, will be reporting before the opening bell tomorrow. So a lot of anticipation behind that. Yeah, and that's what's so good about kind of these single you know, stock ETFs is if you have some good idea around earnings of you know, maybe what's going to happen, these really help you get some good exposure in that arena for sure. Another thing I think is super interesting, we're starting to see it wake up a little bit, right, is kind of the regional banks, right? You have the three times bowl, which the DPST, that's like region, citizens. You had M&T, uh, an article on M&T actually come out today. It was from Gentler Capital Management saying that this is going to be a huge one, right? You're getting some major movements. Um, of course, they're now required to have a bit more uh, I think capital on hand to kind of prevent what happened with uh, some of them closing, you know, a few years ago. Uh, but I do think as well, you're seeing the kind of lower interest rate structure that we're kind of moving into. Now, there's still a question, it's a gray zone, how fast that's going to happen, by how much are we going to get cuts each cut cycle. Uh, but this is where you can start seeing regional banks really wake up in a major way. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, the net interest income uh, really in focus. Uh, regional banks are you know, more sensitive to that than uh, your broader uh, you know, investment banks that have you know, uh, larger arms and different areas to provide uh, you know, sources of revenue. And you mentioned DPST, our triple leverage off of the regional banks. 48% of that basket is actually reporting this week. Yeah. And um, <laughs> right now, it's trading uh, at highs for the year. Um, and if we actually look a little even broader off of the regionals uh, to the broader financial select sector, yeah. um, we've had you know multiple banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, you know, City to name a few that have already reported and actually have all beat. So we've seen a surge in equity trading revenue, uh, really from last quarter's uh, market whip saw and the VIX at its highest level since 2020. Um, so. We, uh, we do have uh, two uh, leveraged uh, ETFs off of that, leverage and inverse off the financial select sector as well. That's FAS uh, and FAZ, both uh, triple leverage and then triple inverse off the financial select sector. So, um, you know, we have a handful of uh, different uh, ways to trade the financials and, you know, like you mentioned, also the regional banks as well. Uh, and so some really exciting stuff and a lot of uh, the basket for both of those indices reporting this week and next. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just taking a look at DPST, you're saying near the highs. I mean, yeah, that, that's moving up five or what, 5.15% right now as it stands. And, uh, you know, really what, what I love at least about the, the the grander kind of banks in the financials is any way these interest rates go, you either get them lower, you get a tick up in rents, you get more, excuse me, in um, income, you know, you get a higher rate, you get more interest return. It's great. Elliot, thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure having you on. Hey, thank you for having me. Always great being on with you guys. Take care, Elliot. We'll see you soon. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. <laughs> 